Hi everyone, it's Evelyn, and in this week's video, we're going to tour my cut flower beds. It's April 7th, it's a beautiful sunny day today. It's actually the evening now because I'm uh, filming this a little bit after, because when I re-watched my video, I realized I did the whole thing with the sound on mute, which doesn't exactly work, so I'm going to dub it over. It's April 7th, it's been a beautiful sunny day. Enjoy the tour. So we're going to start on the north side of the back garden, which is the bed that has my stock, nigella, and sweet peas on it. The stock and nigella were planted on March 16th, while the sweet peas were planted on March 5th. The tomato rings that you see here, there's six of them, they hold deciduous peonies, and they're there to A, in the winter, mark where they are so I don't accidentally disrupt them, and B, in the summer, create some support for the deciduous peonies because they will need support. And if they overhang a bit too much onto my, um, <clears throat> excuse me, cut flowers, I can tie them up to the, to the tomato rings. Underneath these bottomless milk jugs, I have my sweet peas, which you will have seen how I did that and why I did that in my March garden tour, which I'll link in the description box below. Excuse me one sec. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I've left the, uh, the, the covers on them because we've had quite a bit of rain and wind the last few weeks, but it's getting to be about the time of year where they need to come off because it's definitely starting to get warmer. I mean, it's 14 degrees in, in our garden right now, Celsius, which is just... Um, if I didn't have a, they don't stay on the sticks when I push them up, they'll fall back down. If I had some support on them, I would have actually lifted them up today. I'll get going on that the next time it's a sunny day that I'm home. My nigellas, so they've been planted now for March 16th for a few weeks, and they're, they're starting to, uh, just starting to put on a little bit of size, which is more or less standard because when I first plant them out, I have noticed over the years that for about two weeks, what they do is they put root growth on and not top growth, which is really, really important for plant health, that they get a nice, healthy root stock on them. And that's what they always do. And then once the top growth starts, it uh, it goes pretty quickly. There's Leela. The, the dogs are listening to me talk and think that I'm talking to them, so they want me to play with them. <laughs> These are the lavenders that I cut some sprigs off of last fall and just stuck in the ground so that they would root over winter. And again, in the March garden tour, I dug one up and showed you the root ball. So you can check back on that if you'd like to see how much root they put on over the winter. My paths are dirt. I used to have wood chips on them, but uh, wood chips stick to the golden retrievers. And then they, there's wood chips all over the, uh, the house which we don't like. They're not big wood chips. We used to go to the sawmill and get fur, fur chips from the um, from the sawmill. And uh, it does have a bad habit of sticking to their fur. So I haven't been doing that for the last couple of years. These are my stalks. They're looking really healthy and strong. They were planted at the same time as the nigella. The stalks are branching stalks. So they are not one and done. One and done means you cut the flower and you get no more flowers. These ones are what's called cut and come again, and that means that when you cut the flower off, you will get another flower. <laughs> the dogs don't climb into the beds. They've been trained not to, but they will roll their uh, ball into the beds, trying to force me to pick it up and play with them. Uh, my deciduous peonies are putting on some nice growth, as you can see here. That's, I, that's about, what, four or five inch stalk coming out of the ground there. At the back of the bed, I have some one-gallon pots of chives. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with them. They were just growing in um, places where they weren't supposed to be growing last year, so I dug them up and potted them up. These are just some tulips that have been in pots for years. I haven't had the heart to uh, discard them until they actually stop blooming. They look like they're getting pretty close to the end of the road for them for blooms. I have had some like orange emperor tulips that in pots have bloomed for six years straight which is pretty good. I then planted them, um, so they could have gone on longer in the same pot. I don't know. So at the uh, front of the bed, you'll see it more or less lines up with the back of our garage and um, disappears into the darkness of shadow. And um, I have like a rock path down there. That's because that gets quite creaky, creaky as in wet in the when it rains because we're on a slope here and a lot of water travels down there you can see there's the drainage pipe for our gutter and it all goes to the edge of our property there and uh, drains that way but the dogs 
run around the house and chase each other and they created a change of path so it was starting to run right into my flower beds which is not good for the peonies so I kind of dug a triangular high spot so that the water would still travel to the edge of the property not to the bed the other side of the triangle picks up the water that um, our deck is quite large, so when water runs down our deck, it can come off the edge of the deck there like a waterfall and completely miss the gutter, just completely go over top of it with how much water is coming off of it. And then it lands down on the four-foot path here that uh, then will drain around that high triangular spot to where the drainage is. The side of the garage here is where I do sunflower successions, and that's not happening for a bit, so I've just got some stuff piled up there that... Uh, I want close close to the garden if I need it, but that will move when I need to plant. My second bed is where, um, from the uh, fence line there, is where my lettuce is planted, and it was planted on March 20th. I have will be putting two tomatoes at the front of the bed there. The red tomato rings are where my ito peonies are, going, are, are planted, and uh, ito peonies are really cool. I'll put a link in the description box below if you want to ch uh, to a... Um, just an article online if you want to read more about what an Ito peony is. I was at the garden center last Sunday and they had some blooming blue anemones. And I couldn't resist, so I bought five of them because the blue anemones are definitely a color that I just think is gorgeous in the spring. I mean, with pink, pink with my pink camellias, blue anemones, and um, a few other things that might be blooming at that time, I just think that's just gorgeous. Uh, and I'll actually put a picture in my, up here on the screen now where you can see it. So this is the one uh, blue peony that I had last year. And it's got a bud on it, which is kind of cool. Oh, there's a bramble. What's that doing there? Toss that aside. All my other um, anemones that I have in the ground here, they're not blooming. So it seems like only the blue ones go early. Pulled up the bramble and I pulled up a worm. My soil is really, really healthy. And I have worms everywhere, which increases the soil health from all the worm castings that I get from them. So the anemones that I didn't dig up last year, they're just along the edge of the bed, and the rest of the bed is full of either the ito peonies, the two tomatoes that will come, or lettuce plants, which I planted at 6-inch intervals. Normally I plant at 12, but I had so many seedlings I put them at 6-inch intervals, and you can see they're looking really healthy and putting on a bit of size now. Interesting fact, when I planted them back on March 20th, they were so small that a couple of them were sitting on the soil surface and I missed to them. And um, about a week ago, I went, what's this? And because they had grown roots on the surface exposed to the air, and they were growing at the same pace as the other let lettuce seedlings just on the surface of the ground. So I picked them up and I planted them where I found a spot or two. So here's one of them. You can see it's a little bit smaller than the other ones, but you know, it was sitting on the soil surface for a while and then it, and then it got tra up, transplanted. There's the other one that was under a chunk of dirt, so it's clearly not looking that great. My Ito peonies are looking fantastic. The, uh, I think I'm going to zoom in here on it a bit. Huh, where is it? Come on, come on, come on, get the camera on it. Well, maybe not. Now I'm talking about the milk jugs, which I use to cover up things if it gets too cold. It has not been that cold. It's been cold. March was cold. It's been colder than normal. Normally I sit on the deck in the sun quite a bit in March at the end of the work day, but I've only been able to do that twice so far. Um, but we haven't had as much rain as usual either. It's been drier and colder, so it's basically been uh, cloudy with, with cold ocean winds coming off the ocean. So I haven't really needed to use the bottomless milk jugs to cover up anything as close as this, this month. My kale that you saw in the March Garden Tour has definitely put on some size. I have a few of those plants. They're not for us. We Both of us really don't like the taste of kale. They're actually for the dogs because it keeps the dogs healthy, doesn't it, Leela? Yeah, yeah, Leela, look at you. Aren't you pretty and healthy? Yep, yep, yep. And, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to walk around to the front of this bed. And we're going to walk over to my ranunculus bed, which has, when I bought the five blue anemones, I also, they had a blooming an array of different ranunculus, and there were six what I think are picote ranunculus. And they're either white picote or pink picote, so this is definitely where I'm putting that picture of the um, flowers from the blue anemones, because I did an arrangement in a vase with them and the pink and the uh, picote ranunculus. Interesting thing about the picotes is, is their uh, leaf is a completely different pattern than the amandines that I've got planted in the ground. 
Now, if they're not Picotes, when you look at the picture, please let me know because I would like to know if they're not what they are. And if you know whether they're pink or white picotes, let me know that as well down in the comments section below because uh, they weren't labeled because it was just a mixed bag and and I found there was like yellow ones and red ones and white ones and then these ones and these ones were like, oh no, I got to have those because I cannot get those as corms, not even from the wholesaler that I now have. They don't have picote ranunculus and those are so pretty. So in the bed... The ranunculus were planted on March 5th, and ranunculus is supposed to be good to minus 5 Celsius, and we have not gone down that low. We went one night to a week ago down to minus 2, and they seem to get a bit of cold damage from that, which really surprises me because nothing else did, not even the lettuce, which clearly doesn't like the winter temperatures as much as ranunculus does. But they're looking really healthy. They're looking really strong. They put on some growth. The leaves that look like they've gotten cold damage, they'll die back. But that, that, that's okay because they've got new small leaves coming out. That won't hurt them really at all. It might just toughen them up a bit. And uh, they're not... I have orange, white, and marshmallow in color, which is a pink. And they're just all mixed up because... They are all mixed. They were all mixed up when I dug them up. I'm going to define them. I'm going to put white tags where the white ones are. I'm going to put little wood sticks where the orange ones are. And I haven't quite decided what to put where the pink ones are yet. And um, so that when I dig them up, I can separate them by color. Because I don't really want the orange ones. Look at my um, Ito peony here. Isn't that beautiful? That one is Bartsella. Because when I look at my garden plan, there's a yellow uh, uh, Ito peony there. And the only yellow one I have is Bartsella. So the Itos are planted, pardon me, the Itos, the ranunculus are planted as well at six inch intervals. And again, so that I can put the milk jugs on top of them as close as if I need to. Look at that Ito peony. I'm really looking forward to seeing the blooms on them this year because they bloom, they bloom June. The deciduous ones bloom before the Itos. So, so it gives you a bit of a staggered peony bloom that way. So this next bed is my... Snapdragons, and they just got planted out on March 26th. They're still looking pretty tiny, and um, they'll stay looking like that for a while before they grow because they need to have their two weeks of roots, as everything does. Some chives are growing up amongst them. As you can see, that's what those tall, skinny, grass-like looking things are. And um, I'll pull those all up, but I'm not going to do it right now. Well, I might pull up a couple, but I'm not going to pull them up right now because I might disturb the roots on the tiny snapdragons. I'll wait till the snapdragons are a bit more established. Got some tulip leaves popping up in there. Clearly there was some mixed up in the dirt below. Look at that Ito peony. Oh, that's just beautiful. I don't have on my garden plan labeled which Ito peony is which. So on this bed, I'm only going to be able to get one tomato because the I decided not to sacrifice snapdragons for that tomato spot. So the, the snapdragons went all the way up to the front there, and I'm only getting one there. I've got two tomatoes in front of the ranunculus. But on the lettuce bed, I managed to be able to find space for three tomatoes. So that makes up for the missing one on this bed. On my bachelor buttons bed, which is the fifth bed, uh, it will not have tomatoes in the front. It will have zucchini. I'll have a couple of zucchini growing, two or three zucchini growing in the front there. I can let them spill out onto the grass so they don't need as much room in the garden as normal because they will be spilling into the grass. Along the edges of the bed is my hard neck garlics that I planted last fall. I think I planted them around the end of October. And they look like they've got about a six inch spacing, but which is, um, normally I only do four inch spacing, so I could have actually done the four inch and got a few more in there, but that's okay. There's enough planted for us, more than enough for us. The bachelor buttons have been in the ground since March 16th, and they look like they're starting to put on some size. So their roots are established, and you can see that they've got a nice little stem, so they're, they're starting to jump up in height a bit, which is really cool. And of course, the Ito peonies have buds on them as well. Not buds, but leaf, leaf shoots. Now you'll notice that in front of that bed, there looks like this triangular section, and on my map I've written yarrow because I have yarrow planted in there, and then those two little rectangular things are two concrete steps that go up to the driveway of the garage, which is on a slope. So there's the two concrete steps, and here's my yarrow. Now I've got uh, three different kinds of yarrow. I've got tags in two of them, and the, the third one doesn't have a tag because I've had it for years and lost the tag years ago. I've 
these uh, two in the front here, I just planted those uh, last year, and they look like they came out of gallon pots, and they're already quite a bit bigger than when I planted them. Because you can see that those two, they're they're way bigger than a gallon pot would be. That's a foxglove that's come up behind them. I may have put that foxglove there because uh, they sort of self seed everywhere, and I dig them up and find appropriate spots for them. They're really easy to move around. You can just drop them on the soil surface where I live, and they'll continue to grow. I know that because. I dug up a whole bunch, left them in a pile one fall, completely forgot about them, and the next spring they were just growing happily along in their pile on the soil surface, and then they got planted. My rosemary looks like it was not happy with this winter. It looks like half of it has died. And that's too bad. I mean, it was already half the size. You can see that it's only growing on half the um, rootstock because the other half died last winter. Clearly, it does not like this spot. Now, next to the rosemary, you can see there looks like a path there, which is probably created by the dogs, and I have a bunch of bulbs growing in there. I think I have some aliums in there, as well as tulips, etc., but I think that's where I'm going to plant my acidanthra. And I say I think. I shouldn't say I think. I have already planted the acidanthra, and I did not plant it there. I planted it behind my garden chair that you see right here. So right there where that little... Uh, right beside this spot, just to the right of that. This is an astilbe, one of my astilbes. This is a uh, uh, purple clover, which I leave there just for soil health. And look, my hyacinths are, are blooming now. My crocuses finished blooming. They only bloom for three weeks this year. Normally they bloom for four. They were a week late coming up, but they finished at exactly the same time as they normally do. And now my hyacinths are coming up. And they always bloom. They start blooming really close to the ground, and then they just start growing a longer and longer stem, but keep on blooming. And they get taller and taller and taller. And if you plant them in a slightly shady area, they get much taller. So they can be used for cut flowers, but when you cut them, I find the scent gets really, really strong, and I find it really sickly sweet. So I don't like it as a cut flower. But that doesn't mean other people won't, so I may or may not use them in my flower wagon, depending on when the flower wagon gets opened up, which depends on when the daffodils and tulips start blooming. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Now, the tulips in my garden have looked like they're getting ready to bloom pretty quickly. Oh, there's another foxglove, because a lot of the tulips in the garden already, that's, that's, a, that's a dahlia tuber that I must have tossed there because it was rotten, and other is still be. Um, the tulips in the garden look like they're going to be starting to bloom in another in less than a week. This is a Swiss chard, which uh, self-seeds all over my garden as well, and I let it because we use a lot of Swiss chard, both for ourselves and for the dogs. Um, that one is one that would have self-seeded last year. They die back for the winter, and then they come up again in the spring and put out their, their uh, flower stalk and then send seeds everywhere and I let a few go to seed for the self-seeding process and the seeds start growing usually around May, June and then we have lots of Swiss chard for the fall. This is a lemon balm which also just pops up everywhere in my garden even though I don't let it go to flower and I pull it up every time I see it because it's just so weedy. Lots of foxgloves. This is sweet marjoram. We use a lot of sweet marjoram. It's also quite weedy in my garden, but I don't mind because we use a lot of it. And born tulips. And here's a fever few, which I also did not plant because it, self, it just sort of pops up everywhere in the garden. So I let some of them stay and I get rid of a lot of them depending on if, if they're in the way or not. More astilbe, more tulips. That was a double uh, Shasta daisy that we just walked past. And I missed where my... Um, where my um, Russian sages are, but they're in there somewhere. <laughs> I've got some sweet peas planted up against the fence here that did not get cloches on them, so it will be interesting to see how they progress compared to the ones that are covered in cloches. They look, they look a little sad from the weather, but that doesn't mean anything, because again, the roots will be establishing nicely. So that's my five cut flower beds in the garden. I got nice white paths so that I can place things on them and so that the dogs can travel around. And um, that, thin, that thin section along the side of the garage and along the fence there, that will all be successions of sunflowers. What's coming through the fence right now is ivy from the neighbors. When I cut that all back, I'm going to try and see if I can make small wreaths out of that. So I'm leaving it until I'm ready to do that because it's quite pliable um, while it's living. And uh, we'll see how that works out. That's a project for a little later on when everything's planted and I'm not quite so busy. So I'll grab my plan. I'll move on. 
off my chair there. There's another chair beside the garage. I like having chairs here, there, and everywhere because I like to be able to sit down, enjoy, contemplate, think, plan, imagine, all that sort of stuff. And I like to do it in a, sitting down in a comfortable seat. And I never know when I feel like sitting down and doing that. These are my strawberry cages. And along here, where the drop-off is, is where I'll be planting my cosmos. That section is quite shaded from the gazebo, which I just showed you, which is fine, because I really am only growing the cosmos for foliage, so I have no idea why I bought the more expensive um, full-headed cosmos. I like the way they look better, but I'm really not growing them for the flowers. I'm, I'm growing them for the foliage. I find it really pretty. Down at the bottom of my driveway here, I have stored right now three blueberries, that are coming into bud. Two of them are starting to get their little buds on them. The third one never uh, never loses its leaves in the winter, so I can't say it's going into bud because it still has its leaves, but it's probably putting out new leaves. I um, push them about four feet apart once they start to bury up and put cages on them so the birds don't get them and so the dogs don't get them. The raspberries I will then move um, just slightly away from them so that I can get the cages of the blueberries. That big pot of raspberries there, that's, that's, been, that's an old faithful. It's been with us for years and years. <clears throat> this pot here, I think it drowned out because the gazebo there, as I showed you, the roof line is there, and I think too much water ran into it. <coughs> and it drowned. It was sitting in uh, um, sitting water. This raspberry is doing good. This raspberry is doing good. So hopefully we'll get lots of raspberries this year. I may have to put some cages on them because I noticed the dogs were getting in there and eating all the raspberries last year. Along this small retaining wall made with the uh, concrete blocks, I've got um, lavenders growing in it, some sedums. And down at the base of it, I have the globe thistles are popping up along the base where some of the seeds fell. I may leave those ones there even though I don't want to grow it up where the cosmos are going to go anymore because I find the cosmos more useful than the globe thistle. I've still got more lemon balm growing there, so I'll have to pull that up at some point. And I've got a, a Katoni Aster and a Leela dog. So at the top of our driveway here is where our garage is, which is, of course, what our uh, large deck is on. You can see how much water would run off of that in a heavy rainstorm and spill as a waterfall into the garden. But we've got the doors to the garage open right now because it's such a beautiful day. It's 14 degrees out. And the plexiglass panels, which act like a uh, greenhouse front to the garage, would make it a bit too hot in there for my seedlings. So they're opened up for the day. And um, what I've got over here is my first succession of sunflowers, which I planted two weeks ago. They're ready to plant out, but um, I will probably not be doing them today because we've got a windstorm planned for tonight. And uh, you can see it's got roots coming out the bottom already. So they're definitely ready to get planted. But with a wind and rainstorm for tonight, um, weather warning that uh, probably not a good time to plant them out. They might take a toll on those uh, stems that they have. So we'll leave them for another day to get planted, but they're definitely ready to plant. Here are my African marigolds. They're going to go where the nigellas are when the nigellas are cut. I will definitely have to pot them up before that happens because uh, that's not going to be for a while. The Cosmos, they're looking really good. They're also ready to plant out, but again, I'm not going to do that with their stems, even though their stems are looking pretty pretty tough and strong. They've got roots coming out the bottom, or at least one of them does and on that, on that uh, cell pack, but the stems look really strong. But with a, with a windstorm and a rainstorm coming tonight, absolutely not planting those out today yet. Esri's just put the red ball in the way of where that cell pack goes back, so let's get that out of the way. Dogs can play with it. I can get my Cosmos back where they go. Esri can harden off my Cosmos some more by banging them around with her ball. Here is my second succession of sunflowers, which I planted just one week ago. And they, as per usual, started sprouting on day four, which was only three days ago. You can see how much size they have on them already after just three days. They're actually ready to plant out as well. So they will get um, pro probably planted the same time as the first succession does. They don't need, they didn't need any hardening off because when they come out of the seed shells, they've got all the conditioning they need to uh, sit in the sun. They're, they're not gonna get damaged. It's just the ones that sit under grow lights for a long time. They're not used to having strong sun on them. They've lost that ability to handle it. So they need to get readjusted to it. So 
<laughs> yep, yeah, Petri's definitely hardening off my Cosmos. Throw that ball for them. We're going to uh, walk up the driveway now anyway. So here on the driveway, the three concrete beds that line the house there, that's where the first successions of sunflowers are going to go. The first one will not be this one. It'll be um, closer up to the front of the house. This will be the third succession. Once they're all full there, I will then start along the side of the garage. So not much has happened in them. We don't need to look at that. And I'll give you a little tour of what's poking up through the shade garden on the other side of the driveway. And uh, some, some little actions has been happening since the last time I showed you where basically nothing was happening yet. And what we have here is just... I'm going to zoom in here on a sec. Look, look. This is like brand new. I've got the hostas are starting to pop. They were not starting to pop yesterday. So this little bit of warmer weather that we have today, they are, de they are just starting to come out of the soil. That's just, that's just awesome. This front section has hostas too. They're mini hostas. I think they'll be popping later. Here's a uh, columbine. And here is a coral bell or hookera with, uh, looks like it'll have amber leaves on it. I've got quite a few different ones in here with different colored leaves. Uh, that's, there's another hosta. That's that's just really exciting that they're starting to pop up. I think the uh, coral bells started coming up about a week ago. I look at my camellia bush. It's got quite a few bl blooms on them. Not enough action of flowers to get the flower wagon out yet because that would just be a couple of bouquets, you know, two, three, four bouquets, and, and then what? But once, of course, the daffodils and the tulips start blooming and those pots go up onto the flower wagon, then I will be using camellia blooms to create bouquets and put into the flower wagon as well. And come May 1st, I'll also be selling my uh, pre-started dahlia tubers. What's interesting about this is, is where all the blooms are, that's the um, east side of the camellia bush, the side the sun rises on. The west side doesn't seem to have many blooms at all. Here's another hosta. You can see just a few little buds coming out of that one. <laughs> and Esri walking by. Here's a primrose coming up. And here's an, the more primroses coming up. I noticed the primroses were coming up the other day. That was quite a bit of fun. This uh, um, fern doesn't look like it's got much happening yet. Oh, look, I've got a bud. This is the first bud that I've seen on the primroses. So this is really exciting to see this on this primrose bud there. And here's another uh, hookera or coral bell. This is one has more of a purple leaf. This fern doesn't have any action in it yet. 
Can't see anything showing up there yet in the uh, big fern ball. I have no idea why when that's going to pop up. I've never really paid attention. That's a really big giant fern. Really gives it the uh, forest forest feel. Oh, and I got a red ball growing there. Hello, Esri. Leela's sitting there in the driveway. So now we're going to walk over to the dahlia beds. And as you can see, uh, if you watched my previous garden tour, I've, I'm now um, doing a composting of a different bed. And you can see clearly how I dig a trench. I put br um, branch debris and any other garden debris at the bottom of the bed. I'm using dahlia stalks with the branches. The branches are cuttings from the cedar trees that line the driveway when I trimmed them out last fall. I put those at the bottom of the bed to break down slowly. Oh, look at the dogs. And um, actually, let's go walk over and see what the dogs are doing. They're um, just playing really gently. I'm still pointing. I'm pointing to the ocean there because I'm showing how I keep the top of the cedar trees trimmed so that the view for the people across the street is impeded as little as possible. It's impeded by lots of other trees in the neighborhood. The dogs are having a nice gentle playing time. They have a they have a good time together. They're sisters. Um, one of our friends thought that maybe they were touching each other in the womb because they have such a close bond, so they're used, they're used to touching each other a lot, and they still do that. And um, they just have a really, really good time. They'll turn three August 1st, so we'll have a big special birthday for them when they turn three. Well, not a special birthday, but, you know, we'll certainly acknowledge it. Who's going to go for the ball? Uh, there goes Esri. <laughs> The uh, slope of the driveway keeps them entertained with the ball. Anyway, so as I, um, what I'll do then is I'll put kitchen scraps every day down here against this left side of the bed, and then I'll dig the soil from the right side of the bed, move it over the cut, cover the kitchen scraps, tamp it down, and work my way through the bed that way. When it's finished, I'll move on to another bed. And um, yeah, and if there's any plant debris left by the time everything's all planted up, I'll just put it aside and use it in the fall once uh, once beds empty up a bit. In fact, when the uh, nigella finishes before I plant the African marigolds there, I might quickly dig out that bed and put some more plant debris at the bottom of that because, uh, you know, waste not, want not. It keeps the soil healthy. It keeps it full cycle within the garden. I don't have to bring anything in from anywhere else. While I was at the garden center, I found a beautiful lavender that I decided to buy for our deck and I'm going to use the soil from this dahlia bed to pot it up into a bigger And what I'll be, these are the ones that are going to, when they flower, they'll be going up to the road in the flower wagon. 
So the daffodils are, this front row of daffodils, it doesn't have any green showing yet. It must be a later variety because they're all like that from that whole row and they're all the same kind. They are the mortgage booster or something like that. I can't read the name there. Uh, what I, oh, baby boomer, baby boomer daffodil, mortgage booster. That's a tomato. So uh, they might be a later variety. That's why none of that row has uh, come through the ground yet. The other daffodils are mostly all coming up. Not each row is not each different type. There might be two types in, in one different row. These ones over here, they have some little um, flower heads on them. So hopefully they'll be blooming soon. And they are called, <laughs> but I could hold the camera still on my tag. I might be able to read it. They are called Copelli, Cocapelli, Cocapelli daffodil. So those are the first ones to put some flower heads, not some flower heads, some blue, some buds on them. So hopefully those will bloom soon. Hopefully for next weekend I'll have them up on the road. The da uh, the daffodils, the tulips, they're all, they're all doing great, and uh, there's some of them that also have nice flower buds on them. In fact, you can actually see the color red in one of them. In some of them, as you can see here, you can. You can see the um, where the sweet peas are, there's lots of little sprouts. Those are all red annual poppies that I've uh, sprinkled seeds out. Now, the birds weren't able to get at the seeds because the cloches were in the way, so I've got uh, far more sprouting than I need. I was expecting the birds to clean them out, not taking into account that they wouldn't be able to get at those sections. So they'll have to get thinned out or moved around. Now, the reason we have um, concrete boards as part of our fence here is, is because this section of our property actually drops down quite quickly. And um, in order to get the garden level, I had to fill it up with soil and I didn't want the soil up.
Hi. I hope you enjoyed the tour. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. And I look forward to seeing you next week when hopefully the flower wagon will be up on the road. And that's what next week's film will be all about. I'm getting distracted by Isri here who's got her ball and wants me to play with her. Bye!